So a push strikes again after years of irrelevancy and pleading, begging after Daniel Hakika jo challenged him in a debate. Years ago, this man gained prominency. All of it butchered when he finally debated with the Muslims by Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, when he just threw out every single argument out the window, that every argument he presented was irrelevant. Irrelevant to me. I simply do not think that it is irrelevant to the to the point at hand. I mean, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> then came his debate with Muhammad Hijab, where he went completely unhinged. He made a ludicrous statement that morality is not restricted to objectivity and sub subjectivity. Do morals exist I mean, objective reality or not? Yes or do you, that is, is not how it works. Or are they? Are they objective or subjective? What in your view? What say it again? I didn't understand you. Okay, my my question to you is so simple. Like what? my question to you is what? morality is it objective or not? Are there such a thing as objective moral? I don't think so. So okay, good. So 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 then therefore all of your moral arguments have have collapsed against Islam. No, so no, they they have 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 ones, have and you've collapsed all your moral ones. Yes, no, they have not. Yeah, because that, if, so you're, you're saying different. you're an objectivist. If you're a subjectivist... I am not. No, you said you're not an objectivist. You must be a subjectivist. What are you then? No, stop pretending you... Stop wait, pretending wait, 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 did you just say if I'm not an objectivist, then I must be a subjectivist? Is that you have to be? If you're not, if you don't believe in objective morality, what are you laughing at, so, man? So if I if I don't believe in objective morality, then I have to believe in subjective morality. Yeah, because I'm objective or subjective. You've got two choices. What, what's the third option? Go on. Thank you. Thank you. What? And then the one that is most relevant to this topic of ours. His debate with Daniel Hakika Jew, which was a disaster for him with remarks like these being present in the debate. It is unanimous that uh, physical punishment is of absolutely no use. Moskos, Peter Moskos disagrees with you. Non-Muslim Peter Moskos has an entire book in defense of flogging. No, it, it is. <laughs> he doesn't, it, he didn't it, write it that? Complete, go look at that. This is basic psychology. Positive punishment, <laughs> negative punishment. You said it that is, jailing is, is a punishment. Psychology. We both agree that punishments have to exist. They're a necessary evil, no, right? I don't think so. Then what, where are we going to put the rapists? Corrective behavior. All those Muslim immigrant rapists, where are you going to put them? Corrective behavior. Where? Co they don't want corrective behavior. Correct. They don't want corrective, corrective facilities. behavior. We, 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 like a jail, they're locked I up? I don't think, I don't think that a Muslim who is caught raping somebody in the, in the, in the West, in Germany or in America, should be uh, put onto um, a, a, a thing, a, a, a board or whatever it is, and lashed 100 times. That is absolutely horrible. That is, that is a, that is, Absolutely, completely. You, you prefer lenience for bigger, rapists. Big, bigger, bigger than the crime that has been committed. That is inhuman. It does not correct the behavior. The rapist will come out and he will not think, "Oh, yeah, I should have, I should learn from this punishment. I should not do this again." We know psychologically, seeing that what happens. Look at here, and this Look is, at the. And, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Daniel, this, Sorry, is a, this, is, this is the main argument against Islamic society and Islamic laws. What happens if you punish someone harsh, harshly with physical punishment? If you and in the debate itself. He asked for another debate. You know, when you're knocked out in a boxing match and the opponent says that I, I want to fight again, you know, he didn't work with Green Mitch against Mike Tyson, wouldn't work with this guy as well. He had his chance at another time, at another debate. And again, he proved his ignorance and stupidity when he brought a foolish argument that I'm still trying to understand. Islam makes many claims. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad makes many claims. Uh, the Quran makes many claims. Like in the in the in the Quran, uh, a prophet is mentioned, like uh, Ilyas, for example. Ilyas is taken from uh, Hebrew uh, Eliyahu, uh, in English known as Elijah, and stands for "My God is Yahweh." In Christian and uh, Jewish belief and culture, this is very normal because they have many of these theophoric names because their God is named Yahweh. Even if Yahweh, yod ha -weh -ha, is not mentioned in the New Testament uh, because they, out of respect for the name, they merely refer to him as God, but they still have the word in their scripture because they have the Old Testament. Every Jew and Christian knows that they believe in this God with that name. Islam doesn't. In Islam, that is not the name, and you guys will not acknowledge that this is his name. And now finally comes this debate. Now the debate starts with a pus. He starts off with a hadith, an eschatological hadith, 
about Muslims battling Jews and winning and he and he puts everything bets everything on this one hadith I mean come on a puss your career is already finished it's over it's out the window so why bother why bother ruining yourself I mean it was years you know a puss it was literally years anyone would rather stay away from YouTube would bother to go through some books read something before showing his face again back to the debate I want to start with this with this uh, narration here. Now, this is a, a report which is attributed to Muhammad. Uh, the vast majority of Muslims around the world are Sunni Muslims. Sunni Muslims uh, make up more than 80% of the, of the Muslim world. They believe that Muhammad made prophecies about the future, about the end times. The, um, and this is one of those prophecies. According to Sunni Muslim studies, and studies of reports about Muhammad. This is undoubtedly verified and authentic. In this uh, prophecy, Muhammad is reported to have said, the hour will not come unless the Muslims will fight the Jews and kill them. Fight the Jews and kill them until the Jews hide behind a stone or a tree. And a stone or a tree will say, Muslim, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. But the Gargat tree would not say, for it is the tree of the Jews. So uh, allegedly there is this uh, tree called a Gargat tree in this, in this uh, strange fantasy world that uh, exists, which Muhammad initiated. Um, and that specific tree is an evil tree, like the Jews. Other trees and rocks will give the Jews away and will say, come and kill them. Now, this is not something that just uh, came into existence today. This is not something that came into existence since the creation of Israel or since the beginning of the 20th century. This is something that was in existence, was reported as early as um, the 8th century, 9th century, or maybe possibly even the, the, the 7th century, around the time of, of, of Muhammad. Um, this is no coincidence, because in Muhammad's time, the Jews were not treated very well. He initially liked the Jews. <laughs> Later, he ended up um, persecuting them, expelling them, exterminating them, and so on. And it is also prominently said that Muhammad wanted to um, expel the Jews. He made that very clear. On that one eschatological hadith, which is a prophecy, it is not meant to dictate the Muslim ethics towards non-Muslims, to the disbelievers, to kafir. He tried to portray Muslims, Islam, and Prophet Muhammad as Jew haters, that we hate Jews. Anyone bothering to read the Quran would know verses like these. We could marry the Jewish and Christian woman. We can eat kosher meat, meat that is slaughtered by the Jews and the Christians. We can eat those meat. It's kosher for us. Now the debate was mostly carried by Daniel Hakika Jew who presented real facts and argumentations, actually quoting the Talmud and the Bible bringing in commentaries from rabbinic authorities the most prominent one used is the most prominent scholar in the jewish scholarly history maimonides daniel hakika jo brings up verses of the talmud and the bible which have been discussed in this channel in these videos of mine that there is jewish supremacy in judaism non-jews are called goims and gentiles literally meaning animal they are presented as subhuman animals that you can rape a Jew can rape a three-year-old goyim and then execute it afterwards because it's considered bestiality. Now Hakika Jo now Hakika Jo pushes him again and again and again and again and again and again, again that condemn these things and he a push refuses to condemn these Judaic teachings instead first of all reject that they even exist. I mean he presented those verses right in the debate and he rejected their existence. Afterwards trying to say that no 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 these verses don't say what it actually is saying. If Islam had anything close to this in the Quran or the Hadith, this man, this boy would have abused and boy would he have not have shut up about it. He would not have accepted any apologetics. What is preposterous is when asked about the Palestinian death. He just blatantly said he doesn't care. Famo says, Apus, honey, how you claim to see these non-existent Hamas? Great 
videos, but seem to ignore the endless videos showing babies blown up by the IDF. I'm sorry, um, what exactly is the logic here? Is the logic, um, yes, Hamas terrorists went in there and they did, uh, they did kill and target and massacre civilians. They bragged about it. They loved it. They paraded it. They cheered for it. They said that we will do it again and again and again, while the leaders said we will uh, cleanse the land of the filth of the Jews. But I'm not supposed to point that out and not supposed to be angered and upset and sad about that, because when Israel responded after a declaration of war and multiple warnings during the bombings, which uh, Hamas Hamas says uh, they have no obligation to protect their civilians because during the bombings civilians died. That means, you know, all of that just goes away. I shouldn't be talking about it. What kind of logic is this? Daniel Kikic himself says here that it's collateral damage and collateral damage is acceptable. I'm, I, I will tell you right now, after what uh, Palestinian terrorist organizations do, if during the response, after a declaration of war, there is collateral damage and people die as a result of that, and that is then paraded as atrocity propaganda because they like to keep their civilian population in the middle of the war zone which they create, then I don't care. Now think about it for a second. This is a man who clearly has access to social media. He's seeing the same things that we are seeing. Babies dead coming out of rubble people buried beneath the building not even getting the sweet embrace of death women idf soldiers are gloating about raping palestinian women you have you have a video where a woman being uh, being stripped surrounded by the idf soldiers and this man this boy this dog uh, this he, knowing that full well, chose to support this genocide. 23,000 Palestinians are dead, murdered in cold blood. Then 11,000 of them children. And all of these are UN reports, Israeli reports. Millions of people are more at risk of dying of starvation. And this boy just callously said he doesn't care. Now this debate was the end of a Pus's already dead career. Any career chances he had ended with this debate. He had nothing to give except for one hadith that he tried to misconstrue, debunked and failed. He could not deal with Daniel Hakika Joe's arguments. He could not deal with the evidence provided. He floundered and floundered and floundered and the way he said nonchalantly and callously that he doesn't care about those dead babies and raped women. He doesn't care about the genocide happening right now of the Palestinians. So he has no morality and nothing to criticize Islam for. Everything he says now about Islam is irrelevant and holds no weight.